Hello, hello, hello. This is Truth Be Told. This is Dr. Walter Aka. And you guys know me. It's Leroy Horton. And uh, we are recording this. It seems to be a, a big hit with a lot of people, just kind of us kind of, you know, answering questions, just keeping it very simple. You know, yeah. we, 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 we used to get so excited whenever we would have this guest come on and this guest come on. And it seems like people just enjoy just listening to us answering questions, questions where we were like, oh, that's a, that's a simple question. But to a lot of our audience, they're like, no, we don't understand that. And so uh, to me, my question is, are dentists just not doing a good job of you know, answering questions for patients? Or maybe the stuff that we think is interesting is really just boring. Like oh, we're sitting there having an hour long uh, conversation on occlusion and listeners are just like, oh. right, 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 <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> the way, the way you bite starts with uh, the, the, the figure eight shape, which then, uh... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah, what when did the you think about? Tip falls gently into the opposing uh, central fossa. That's it. <laughs> See? See, that's that NPR. Don't get it yeah. twisted. I love me some NPR, man. I, I'm just like the older it. I get, the more I love NPR. I don't know why. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, it's it's. I think everything about life is just so hustle and bustle. Right. And NPR is just soothing and relaxed. It is. It is. There's no rush. Yeah, you know? It, you know, it's it's wonderful. Oh, speaking of oh. The um the Super Bowl halftime. We gotta talk about that real quick. Ah, what bro. did you think about Usher's performance? And then I have some beef with some people that were talking about that's probably the best uh uh you know halftime show they've ever seen. I think I would I say best. I thought it was fire. Yeah, I thought he put on it, he brought people out. He I think I thought it was fire if you're our generation. Right. Millennial. If, okay. If my kids, especially my younger kids, I feel like my my oldest, who's 26, was able to yeah. really get into it because she was at like at that tail end of right. the the little Johns and the That's Usher. It. And it. But if you're younger than that, I mean, yeah, you you didn't have no reference point, right? You know, look, I mean, you don't even know who Ludacris is except for maybe <laughs> that guy but, on Fast. But, but, but did you see? Did you see why? Why did uh, uh, Jermaine Dupri come out looking like? Some kind of like uh, some elementary school boy. It was weird. I that saw was that. A little weird. That that made me that made me very un, un, uncomfortable. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I think I probably just glossed over that. I don't. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, I thought it was a good show. Then where would you rank it over the last few years? I'll be honest with you, bro. Like, so what I did was I actually went back and I said, you know, let me review some of the. Uh, super halftime Super Bowls, right? We got the Rihanna. We have the uh, um, I think it was Beyonce did it, put put on a good show. Oh, and then, that one was dope. And then you go back, you go even further back, right? We got Tim, um, Justin Timberlake and and the whole incident with uh, Janet. That was awkward. Yeah. And and then and, and talked for years, right? Uh, right? But then you keep going further back, and you got Prince. That one was a good one, right? And then if people don't remember Prince while he was performing. Purple rain, it literally started raining. <laughs> right. Yeah. He couldn't have done yeah. it any better. He, <laughs> God, well, God was on his side. <laughs> right. You, you couldn't have done it any better than to sing Purple Rain in the rain, you know? Right. And, right. and then right. you go further back to 1992, I think it was, or 93. And Michael Jackson put on an amazing performance. If anybody didn't get a chance to watch him, I think it was 92 or 93, I forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, Super Bowl when halftime show with Michael Jackson, incredible. Yes. Right. And I'm biased. I'm a Michael Jackson fan through and through. So right. to me, that's probably one of the best. Right. Right. But again, all the other people I listed, incredible performance. I had a great time listening to all of them. But I'm not sure if I, I would probably be top uh, five, maybe. Was it was it better than 50 Cent hanging upside down? Oh, see, I forgot Eminem. about that. I forgot the Eminem one. You're right. Oh. You see, yeah. that was also really good. Do you see what I'm saying? There was yeah. so many. Yeah. And, and and to me, I was just like, if you're from down south and you, you know, you hold, you have the whole, uh, you know, just environment of like, you know, uh, figure skating, not figure skating, not like sk skating and stuff like that. When you go to a skating ring, that's right. really big down south. Yeah. Right. So he did a lot of that. And then Steppers, yeah, I think it was the Alphas or I forgot who who came through the like Kappas or whoever came through and did the step in. So there was a lot of like Southern, like, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, 
makeup when it comes to what Usher did. Right. But if you just want great performance, you're talking about, you know, Rihanna, you're talking about Michael, you're talking about Prince, you know what I mean? To me, you know, Eminem. Right. So it, it just all depends. But to me, I'm going to, again, I'm biased, right? But I say Michael, Rihanna was in there. I thought this was awesome. I thought this was excellent. The only, the only issue I had was that the songs were way too short. I feel like the whole performance was kind of short, mm. you know, and and someone like Usher's got so many hits, but I kind of like that. Cause I remember one year I went to see Prince before he died in right. concert at the show box. In oh, Seattle. that's awesome. Um, now, if anyone knows anything about Prince, he really stopped doing his more like provocative songs when he really got into being a Jehovah's witness. So what he did was a whole bunch of like, uh, it was, so it was almost like a heavy metal show. He had an all-female band. He was just wailing on the guitar. Some of the best guitar work I've ever seen. But right at the end, he did a little like mega mix medley. Okay. Where it was all his greatest hits for like 45 seconds. But each song would just transition into the, uh, the next one, the next one. And it was like the most hype five minutes I've ever had at a concert. <laughs> Everybody's because, you know, he doesn't do those songs anymore. Right, right. So he gave you a little teaser and it was just, you know, back in the day, like uh, at noon, the DJ on the radio would play like a mix yep. and it would really just be like a minute of each song. And then he would like scratch into the next song. I kind of like those type of vibes, yeah. you know, especially when you don't have a lot of time. Right. And and plus, I mean, like if you go to a club, that's that's exactly what they do. They don't play like the whole song. They kind of transition in. And, and if you have a good DJ, that's exactly right. I remember back in the day, and this is kind of when we start showing our age. But back in the day, remember, you could actually record radio. Oh, yeah. But you never oh, wanted yeah. like to have the, the talking. Right, right? right. So you'd right. wait and then you'll play that. You'll hit the record and play the same <laughs> time. And then you, you, you hope that you like timed it perfectly where like it transitioned right and you know, and then they got they got the DJs got smart. They started putting noises in there to like mess you up <laughs> and yep. started talking. So you never got the full song. You know what I mean? Listen, these kids don't know the struggle. They don't know anything. They, they're, they're, they're like used to <laughs> fast internet. They're used to like getting whatever they want. I hate them all. Anyway. Me and my wife were just were just talking about um, how back in the day you'd have to you have you have to watch a show. It was weekly, and mm -hmm. if you missed an episode, you're just done. That's it. That's you're it. Just, you're just done. That's yeah. it. And, you know, and yeah. you and you know, it's funny. I remember <laughs> I remember every Easter, I swear to goodness, every Easter was either we'd watch Ben Hur or we'd watch like something on ABC. It was mm -hmm. always like uh um uh, what was it, Moses or 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 no, the Ten Commandments. We would watch right. the Ten Commandments and it would always be on ABC, and my parents would always force us to watch the whole entire thing. And I'm I'm looking back at it and I'm like, I don't understand how uh you know, we're eight years old watching this stuff. Like we shouldn't have been watching any of that stuff, but, <laughs> right. but we all had to sit there because my parents <laughs> wanted to watch it. So therefore we watched it too. Right. You know right. I mean? And they were like, yeah, right. just sit down and watch, just enjoy this and watch and go get me this and get me that, you know? But anyway, let's, uh, let's transition into answering more questions. Okay. Right. Oh, before, before we go, I know you want to talk about, you know, uh, V day, Valentine's oh, day. Valentine's day. Yes. It's coming up. You know, we yes, so I, I appreciate for all the listeners. We were supposed to do this show at six. Mm -hmm. Our guest canceled, and I was trying to move it up because I got my wife in town and I'm taking her to the uh, Trailblazers game tonight. Okay. Um, which should be dope. Is that and for then, you or for her? Oh, that's that's for I'm not a huge, huge basketball guy. I'll I'll okay. enjoy I enjoy anything live. Okay. okay. But my wife was like, I really want to go to a game. So okay. you know, you know how we do it, man. We just like uh, listen, that, make it happen. That's unusual. You make it happen. That's you know? unusual for 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 the for the for the young lady to be asking to go watch a basketball game. That's why I ask. I oh. I'm thinking you're doing this for yourself, but making it seem like it's for your wife. You know, because no, I've seen no, that no. before. I've seen that movie before. You know, <laughs> you seen that movie? <laughs> you know, I've seen that movie before. But you know, this is legit. Hey, for, hey for man, I got you a, a panini press for a right. Valentine's Day. Right. Make me a sandwich. Yeah. Right. See, that's how you get in trouble. That's how you get canceled, man. Oh, let me ask you a question, and, and let me see if you, and then we'll transition into our question, our our, our uh, listener questions, because man, we keep getting tons of these, but. Let me ask you this, okay? And I want to know what your thought process is. And this is a little, we're, we're kind of getting hot topics, hot buttons here. And this mm. may be controversial. I don't know. But a lot of my friends and a lot of people I know in dentistry are having a hard time with patients that are 
either transgender have transitioned or whatever it may be mm. and their pronouns and everything that goes along with it. Right. Because they'll tell you, Hey, you know, you know, this, what's your name, you know, when you fill it out, you're filling out the form and you write your name and so forth. And, mm. you know, you may write down, I prefer to be called so-and-so. Right. But the pronouns, the he, she, they, and all that stuff seems to trip people up because I keep getting literally every week I'll have a story of somebody talking about, hey, I had a patient and I didn't know what to do. Do I say they, they do I say, do you guys, do you guys have that issue? Are you getting more and more of those? We definitely are. I think what I've noticed the saving grace is you're rarely ever talking about the patient in the presence of the patient, right? So when I do, I just use the name or say the patient. Because that shit can be confusing. And what happens is you can make an honest mistake. Right. And there's no grace ever given for that. And you know, I'm I'm trying to I want to be respectful. So if someone use, you know, prefers something, like I would 100 percent try, but you know, sometimes it can be confusing because you can look like one gender, but go by a different gender. You could, you know, use plural or singular for one, like you'd be she, they. Mm -hmm. Mm. And now I'm just, I'm just all screwed up. Like, I don't. Right. And I I feel like, you know, I feel like, you know, the uh, American Dental Association hasn't really mentioned or brought up this problem at all. And Mm -hmm. I say problem in the sense that like, no one wants to irritate patients on purpose. I don't think right. anybody wants to go around making somebody mad on purpose. And there's a right. lot of stuff that goes on, right? When you're, you know, and I, this is for everybody, whenever we're going through our day, it's not just we walk in and you are the only thing that we're thinking about. We actually walk in and we may have just had a conversation about a case that's late for the patient next to you. <laughs> You know, we're trying to figure out how we're going to deal with all these other factors. So an accident, accidents can happen where, you know, maybe we say something wrong or whatever, but there's no intentionality in it. There is no, I'm purposely trying to get on your nerves. I'm purposely trying to offend you. And I think we have to have a little more grace because man, does this conversation come up and people are just flustered. (laughs) Just listen, you know, uh, colleagues talk about them and it just flustered. And I'm like, listen, I'll be honest with you. I just go, you know, what do you prefer to be called? And, you know, I just use your name as written here. If you like Susie, by all means, I'm going to call you Susie. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like the whole uh, uh, coming to America. His mama right. call him Clay, I'm going to call him Clay. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so if you want to be called whatever, I'm going to call you whatever. It's, you know, but th- there is a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of flustered uh, dentists out there that just don't know what they, what to do. Right. You know, and I, I, I helped teach a class years ago it was during during covid um it was a zoom class and it was a faculty member from one of the universities that i'm affiliated with and it was on you know gender issues and how to be sensitive and work around them in a dental setting and you know one of the faculty members god bless her soul said that if we really need to know her recommendation was that we ask you know mrs jones were you born with a penis mm. or a vagina? Oh, boy. And this was dead serious being taught to students. And in my head, I had to, like, mute and, like, start laughing. Because, I mean, A, we're never really in a position to where we absolutely have to know, per se. That's it. Right? That's exactly right. Well, I mean, I, I can't even really think. I'm sure there's probably uh, some scenario. But we really don't need to know. And I'm not going to fix my mouth to ask a patient in my chair if they were born, I'm just, there's no reason to say penis or vagina in a dental setting. In a dental setting. Come on. Come on. There's never been a single time. I can't ever remember. Even when you're putting people to sleep, I don't remember ever asking, by the way, before you go to sleep, but just real quick. Don't do this. Right? No. <laughs> Inquire minds want to know. Right. Penis or vagina? Right. Which right. one is it? Before you go to, I mean, I, I, I know, I know this has not. I'm thinking, you I, know, I'm, I'm leaning towards, but <laughs> I know this has nothing to do with your extractions at all. But I just wanted to know. But, you no. know, that's that's that that just shows that we need to do a little bit better. We need to do more. And we I, do, and but, again, but I can I, see. 
Go ahead. I can see where some areas of medicine would have that be permanent yes. information, obviously. Absolutely. I think we just lucked out. We've we've kind of missed the bullet on that. Um, you know, so and, and in all honesty, again, I'm gonna say this. I don't believe unless somebody is a complete jerk and just completely just a, but then they're a complete jerk to all other avenues of life. I don't right. think anybody intentionally wants to offend anybody. So I'm just going to put it out there. I yeah. think it's one of those things where it's just an accident. Right. And if it's an accident, you correct it. If they keep doing it, not just being dicks. But yeah. if it's an accident and you correct it, most people go, oh, thank you for correcting me right. and so forth. We move so, on. Our okay. Life. All right. So since, since you wanted to bring up controversy, oh boy. put me in the hot spot. All right. It, wait, if you're in a meeting or whatever, and everyone's introducing themselves and they ask for tell us your name and your pronouns. I don't have one. I I mean yeah. person, I've <laughs> never once done it. I'm not gonna do it. I've never I are you you'll be the first. I'll tell you right now. You go to LinkedIn and I see everybody's saying like, pronouns and stuff. I've never once yeah. put that up there. Yeah, I don't I don't participate either. Oh and I, and, and I just it was funny is I just gloss over it. I just say my name and then keep going. That's it. And no one's ever pressed me like because honestly, my answer would be listen, I don't divulge my pronouns. You take a wild guess. If you're wrong, I'll just correct you. Oh man, you do more than that. I just you know, I mean I I've never even had to say that, but that's what I would say. It's like I don't do that, but I respect you if you do. Right. Right. But I, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you get it do, you do get it wrong, right? If I'm clean shaven and you know with the long hair and then oh, you get when it you, when you had your hair down, yeah, and they're like, is that is that the Greek Fabio? You know? <laughs> I wonder what his pronouns are. <laughs> I'll be the first one to come in and be like, yeah, I, I'm kind of curious too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I would just, I would just, I would just correct him. Like, hey, you know, right. if, if you're feeling uh, that way today you're, when you see me. I'll correct you. There it is. I, I I just don't think that's ever been. I've never I've never seen that. I've never had anybody ask me. Uh, right. I don't put it on my LinkedIn. I don't put it on anywhere. I don't even think about it. But again, you know, maybe I'm too old school. Maybe I don't know. But I just never thought that that was something that was that important to me. I would think that right. the patient would want to know. Hey, does he suck at his job? Right. That first and <laughs> foremost. That's it. Does he right. suck at his job? No. Got you. Oh, real quick. Somebody asked me this, man. We're never going to get to these questions. Somebody <laughs> asked me this. They said, you know, a lot of patients, new patients will come in and before they come into your office, they do a bunch of research on you, right? Mm -hmm. They'll go to, you know, different rating sites and check you out and do all this stuff. And then they come in and they spend 90% of the time with the hygienist. So right. why don't they have somebody you know, talk about like what the hygienist is all about. Maybe we should rate the hygienist more than the dentist. Right. Right. They, and, you know, they really should. It. They really should. And the way hygienists have been squeezing our industry, I would not feel bad if they were in a hot seat. Because you're literally, as the doctor, you're on the hot seat for what the front office does, yeah. from what the back office does, from what the assistants, the hygienists, the sterilization tech. At any level, if someone's a jerk to them, it's your five star rating that's that's compromised. That's it. I've had patients leave a one star review that never even came in. They called and were mad we didn't take their insurance, and then left a one star review because we're not we didn't happen to take that insurance. And I'm just like, <laughs> have you ever sat there and wanted to actually respond back to patients' reviews? I know I have. Oh yeah, I know that we're not supposed to. I know right. that you got to take the high road, but man, there have been so many times I've been like, ooh, if anybody knew the full story, <laughs> your review would look so stupid if everybody knew the full story. Let, let me tell you. So I have responded to a couple because uh, we worked with one company, I think Bird Eye, and they kind of give you this generic, yeah, you know, oh, please oh, call the sorry. office, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for a while, because my offices were called Affordable Dental Care. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. And in our in our area, there's affordable dentures. That's it. So we would get a bad review and I'd be scratching my head like, who the hell is this? I don't know this patient. And I don't ever remember doing this procedure right. or having this like repeated, like long term issue. What the hell is going on? And so there was like there was two actually where I had to respond underneath like, you know, I'm so sorry about your experience, but I'm pretty sure you must be confusing this page with affordable dentures mm. because you know 
And yeah, so there's been a, a number of weird stuff that's happened with uh And that's I'm waiting. sure that's mm-hmm. happened to so many people because dentists were not that clever with names. So it would be right. like, you know, smile dentistry and it's like 50 million of them or, or right. you know, smile <laughs> <laughs> smile one two three and it's like 500 million of them. <laughs> right. And you got people right. just like saying random stuff on your page when so we got maybe we got to start doing better, man. Maybe we got to start doing better. We got have a company that just names your office for you. You know what I mean? Right. I'm so tired of like, you know, Smile Avenue or like, you know, Smile ABC or, or you know what I mean? Like all these, like, right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell well, for I'm some wrong. for some of these young people, do you remember back in the day why a lot of uh, company names had A in front of them? Mm, no. So back yeah, when you had the, the yellow book, the yellow A would put you at the very front. So you would be like A dental. And then if yeah. someone wanted to be next, you'd be like A A dental or double A dental. <laughs> then triple A, you would see triple A dental. That's so it. everybody would be at the very front That's on the it. first page. That's <laughs> it. That's it. No, 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 no. This was back in the day before we had Google. Right. But anyway. All right, but hey, let's jump, let's jump into this. I swear okay. to God, we're gonna get to one of these questions. Uh okay, let's talk about it. let's talk about it. you wanted to bring up the idea about uh kids and cavities. You want to kind of yes. Bro, tell me. I'm gonna ask you. I'm. I mean, you're gonna answer this one because I am at a loss. Okay. I've had so many patients. They bring their kids in. They've got cavities on their primary teeth. Mm-hmm. It happens, right? You recommend a filling, right. and often the 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 parent will like scoff, like, "Wait a minute, that's a baby tooth. Right. I'm not spending hundreds of dollars to fix them. They're just gonna fall out anyway. We'll just wait. We'll just wait." Right. And I'm just like. All right, but you know, ma'am, sir, like it's important. Like these teeth probably won't exfoliate for another three years. It could turn into some bigger. So they're just gonna fall out. Technically, yes. <laughs> but <laughs> so how do you do? Or how had you ever? I mean, in Perry, I don't know if you dealt with it, but I'm sure you've been in that. Oh, I was a general dentist similar before. scenario. Yeah, I was a general dentist before, and I I did face that. You know, one thing that always I always tell patients is there was this one story. I'm not sure if you remember this. It was a kid. I think they were like nine or ten, and they were in the um the D.C. area, and they yeah. actually ended up having an abscess that kind of led into their brain, right? Because yes. uh, do you remember that story? Yeah. It was basically a little kid that had an abscess that then actually entered into their brain, and they ended up dying because of that. Mm-hmm. And I tell pa- I tell parents just like with anything, you have to understand that yes, the primary teeth, but they can also get into the nerve canal that the, the primary tooth has, and it can cause an infection, abscess. Right. And you don't want you don't want your kid to go through any pain. I don't care who you are as a parent, you don't want your kid to go through any pain. Let's try to prevent a lot of the pain and uncomfortable situation. There is a stat out there, and I'm, I got to look it up, and I'm sure any pediatric dentist could help me out with this, but there are stats out there that show that most kids, when they miss school, it's because of dental issues. Yeah, that's like the top the top reason for yes. missed school days is, is dental pain and I mean, infection. Again, this could happen. Primary tooth, baby teeth, you can get infections on them just the same as you could with an adult tooth. The only thing that they're, they're completely correct, right? Yes, it will fall out. Mm. But do you really want your child to go through all that pain and suffering just because you're waiting for that tooth to fall out? And don't forget, don't forget right below. So here's the baby tooth. I'm going to kind of demonstrate. Here's a baby tooth. Right below that is your adult tooth. You get an infection, you're causing issues to that adult tooth and the maturity of that adult tooth. That adult tooth may not come in properly. That adult tooth may be damaged. You got to remember that. Infection, adult, primary tooth, baby tooth, uh, uh, primary tooth or baby tooth, adult tooth right underneath. You could have issues with that uh, uh, adult tooth if you have an infection. Absolutely. I mean, listen, we all know that there's a connection the oral, what we call the oral systemic connection, right? Things that happen in the body can present in the mouth and vice versa. Things that happen in the mouth can affect the body. That goes for adults and for children. It's not just this kind of very well-marketed issue of heart disease and periodontal disease, right? Like you said, a child can get an infection. It can it can get into your, um, your, your body spaces, mm-hmm. right? It can spread. It can go up to your cavernous sinus. You can get, you know, you can go septic. We had those, uh, the football player, was yes. it like a month or two ago? A former yep. football player, same thing, had an abscess. Uh, he went septic and he passed away. Mm-hmm. Now, 
if if someone's an adult, not that you know we we can't control what adults do. Yep. Right. right. And we don't know what his circumstances were. Right. The thing with kids is we are responsible for the health and well being of those mm. kids. Kids mm-hmm. cannot just decide mm-hmm. I'm going to go to the dentist today, or I'm <laughs> going to ignore. That's yeah. It. Yeah, or, or I know I should go to the dentist and I'm just going to ignore it. Kids do not have that capacity. That's it. So it is our responsibility to look out for them, 100%. And so, yeah, now if if someone is 12 and they got a tiny, tiny cavity and the tooth is already loose, right. the baby tooth, that, you know, exceptions do exist, you know, for, for the, the gray area purists here. But in general, if you got a cavity that the, your doctor feels should be filled please invest in your children's well-being right right and they have things now that actually can basically stop the cavity from getting any uh any bigger right Right. is this silver diamine yeah yep and that that is something that you should talk to your pediatric dentist we are not pediatric dentists by any stretch of imagination we just know a little bit enough to get ourselves in trouble so yeah. Please, please, please listen to your pediatric dentist. But you have to understand that patients and, pay, you know, just like you, you don't want to go through any pain and suffering. We don't want kids to go through any pain and suffering. And no. it's just unnecessary. There, there's a lot of things that could be prevented. Right. Uh, uh, kids not sleeping when you're when they're babies cannot be prevented. Right. Cavities that lead to pain can be prevented. Trust me on that. 100%. Right. You want to make sure that you prevent the things you can prevent. Yes. Right. So. So, yeah, I mean, we're not going to dive too much into that, but I honestly think that people have to understand that there are other connections to it, not just, oh, it's a baby tooth. It's got a cavity. Ah, leave it alone. No, you got to really take that seriously. No, you know, and to go more philosophically, you want to build a general sense of value for the oral health in your child when they're young. True. You know, because if, if you're we're so susceptible to messaging direct and subliminal at that right. age. If your vibe is always that teeth are not important when they're kids, they're going to grow up thinking teeth are not important. That's true. And that sets them up. You know how expensive it is to fix, repair and replace teeth. That's an investment in their future right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Don't say too much now. This is, this is my, <laughs> my kid's uh, college degree. <laughs> you gotta be quiet. Right. <laughs> I mean, we joke around, but no, it's the truth. You know, we do this podcast because we want you guys to understand prevention is so much cheaper than 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 procedures. Absolutely. I swear to you, if you prevent with a two dollar toothbrush, I promise you, it's cheaper than a two thousand dollar crown or right. a, you know implant or whatever it may be. I promise you on that. Absolutely. You know, uh, yeah. Oh, do you think? Do you think that anybody has the right to to call it um, child abuse? If you, if as a pediatric, as a pediatric dentist, if you see a bunch of cavities and you're telling the, pa- the parents, they need to fix this. And they're like, well, you know, I can't afford it or whatever, or, oh, it's just a baby tooth, they'll fall out. Is that technically, and I don't know the answer to this, but could that be considered abuse? I would think it's abuse, not legally. Right. We, we're but, not lawyers or anything. Morally. But, yeah. Morally, I would say you're abusing the child. But there's this gray area because kids can get cavities even when reasonably maintained. So it would have to be so egregious where the kid has repeated infections, repeated missed appointments. And I feel like there was an era where, and I don't know if that's still going on, where if I, if you missed a certain amount of appointments for your kid when it came to your their dental appointments, you were like deemed or your name oh, was wow. sent to the state. Oh wow. For for neglect. I remember and maybe I'm just pulling like a, a half-assed memory from <laughs> maybe that's 10 what, years that's ago that's wish. making no sense. But <laughs> but I I can see it like it, let's say you didn't bathe your child hmm. for weeks on end. Right. Your teacher would call that in and say, hey, that's that's neglect. That's abuse. You're not even bathing this child. Is teeth any different? And now that we just said they can turn into infections that could be hurtful or harmful right could you make a case there yeah maybe i don't know i i just i just thought about that i was just like could that be considered you know uh abuse and i don't know neglect i don't know i mean i just think that that's something to think about and and you know because you can get in trouble if your kid misses certain amounts of days of school right 
right? But you know, I I don't know. I think that's just something to think about. Um, mm. anyway, question, question, question again. Um, when do you replace crowns, and can you avoid replacing them forever? <laughs> it's the question. Oof. When do you replace crowns, and can you avoid replacing them forever? Well, I guess people should know that in general, nothing is forever. Can things outlast you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, we replace crowns if they break or fracture or if you get a new cavity underneath. Okay. Or in the front, let's say you had crowns, you know, we, were, we had that whole episode on veneers and all that, right? Let's say you did veneers in your 20s. Now you're 45, 50, and you've had some gum recession, and you can see visually it's an aesthetic concern because you can see where the crown ends and the tooth begins. You know, that would be an aesthetic reason versus a functional or a, okay. a health reason. So, um, okay. So let me, I guess, kind of expound on that. Um, when you say we replace it when it breaks, is that something that's yeah. necessary to replace? If like, let's just say it's in the back tooth and it just, it, the, the porcelain, which is a, the tooth colored part breaks off. Is it necessary to replace that crown? If it's the old uh, porcelain with metal, so it's got a metal substructure of porcelain on top, it's not necessary unless, you know, it's sharp and hurting you and you know, that could always be polished down. But nowadays more and more people are making either the full Emacs or full ceramic crowns or the full zirconia crowns. Mm -hmm. um, and if those fracture, they tend to like a whole portion of it just kind of lops off and you have exposed tooth which in that case you do have to that's it have to replace yeah. it but in general i would say your safeguard against someone willy-nilly replacing crowns if you have insurance is your insurance mm. because they put dentists through a painstaking process of that's true. you have to know the history of the crown you have to really submit all this stuff whenever you submit the claim when was the crown done mm -hmm. um what are the reasons? You have to write a whole narrative. You have to submit an x-ray. And often you have to submit a picture nowadays too. You know, so that kind of, that as much as we don't like insurances, that can be your your safety net to make sure that your dentist isn't just walking in trying to pay off his his boat. Oh, there you go. Right? Okay, so um, there is a lot of factors that goes with it. But yeah, um, I guess the answer is if it's broken, like you said, there's a cavity underneath it. And when mm -hmm. I say broken, I'm talking about there's a part of the tooth underneath that's showing. Right. Right. Um, there's a and if that happens, by the way, there's probably a bigger issue. If you're breaking crowns, there's a bigger issue. Either that crown was not done correctly, meaning that you were biting too high on that area, or you're you're just grinding, yes, and clenching and doing all that stuff. And and that was a weird example. You didn't need to do that. You actually didn't need to show that. Was I'm just trying to give a visual that's for it. For the hearing impaired, right? They're giving the subtitles, and then they'll see me going. I need if you're gonna go <laughs> go on YouTube <laughs> to the podcast and watch this 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 fool try to show you what you're doing at home <laughs> without thinking about it. You're grinding in a weird manner, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So so if 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 you you do break crowns and stuff, consider the fact that you might be grinding or or, or mm. clenching. And that force will definitely break these uh, these crowns. So without that, I mean, there's really not many reasons to replace it unless, oh, another factor is, like you said, aesthetics. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way my old crown was, and I want to replace it. So you can absolutely do it that way, too. Right. Right. But that's actually, that's the, when we were talking about not being aggressive at too young of an age and a few episodes ago. That's something that people definitely have to understand. The position of your gums and the bone around your teeth can change. And that can affect the aesthetics of these, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that you just spent, okay. um, depending on how many you did. If if they're next to a natural tooth, as you age and the color of your natural tooth changes, now this crown may no longer fit in, or crowns may no longer look natural. Um, they they'll be a different color from the tooth that's beside it. So you really have to think long term. If you don't really need a crown, my advice is don't get one, right? Cool. But for those that do need it understand that at some point in the future there's a good chance you're going to be addressing this tooth uh, again so you you brought something now now this is my question to you mm. you talked about age you talked about young young adults right you talked about kids here's a question for you let's just say a kid is missing their lateral incisors 
There's the mm. central one in the front, and then next to them is the lateral. Those are some, I mean, those are probably what number two when it comes to congenitally missing teeth. The teeth right. that are most of the time are missing in kids, adult, people, right? Third molars are number one. That's usually number two, right? If you've never developed that as a child and you go in through braces and you kept that space open and then you say, hey, when you're done with braces and you get to an age, it's time for implants. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, what is that age, boy and girl, that somebody should then look to say, I can get an implant then? Because you talked about jaw development and that's what made mm -hmm. me think about this, right? When can someone, how young can we, do we have to be to get implants? That's a great question. And me being my loquacious self, I'm not just going to give you a simple answer. You see, okay. so so he just used a word <laughs> that was on SAT1, loquacious. Right. Use that, spell it first, and then use the definition. Remember that character? Listen, the, just, just, just answer my question first before you dive into your, your nerdiness. Just answer uh, for, uh, males, for males oh. and then for females. For females. Uh, for for males, you probably want to do 21 and over. For females, probably 18 and over, statistically per the literature. Right, right. Right. And, and, and you know, I always like to give that range. I say 19 to 21 for, me, right. for males. And then, like you said, 18 to 20, 21 for females. Right. Yeah. And I, I think early on in my career, it's those were good numbers for me. Right. right. The more I've seen over time and the more I learn is that the jaw keeps growing. OK, and your jaw can statistically likely grow 0.1 millimeter a year in various directions. And why is that a problem? Millimeter. Why is that a problem that your jaw is growing and you just placed an implant? Because the, the, the teeth will move within the jaw as it grows, but the implant will not. And so if I place an implant here. And this is the neighboring tooth over a decade, two decades, three decades. Now you can see where my two crowns, my implant crown, natural tooth were even. Now we're like this. We call right. that in, infra occlusion, right? And so I want to break it down. So for people that aren't are listening and not watching, he basically showed you that the two crowns were next to each other. Mm -hmm. But when your jaw develops, that implant crown does what? It actually sinks in. It sinks into the bone. And so where before it was equal, where the, the two teeth were lined up perfectly, now it looks like your implant crown has sunken in. And it's, right. it's higher or lower, depending on if you're talking about the top or the bottom. Right, right. And, and I think that's that's something that even a lot of dentists don't, either they, they learned it at one point and forgot, or it's not really seared in. Um, and I, I remember, you know, kind of having that revelation as my, you know, kind of implant practice started to grow. It's like, okay, we always focus on what's the earliest you can do. When are they done with growing? Which, you know, for males, you know, 21 and over is a safe number. For females, excuse me, 18 and over is a good number. But all the data shows that in very small increments, your jaw is still going to grow both, you know, in multiple directions. And so, where, but the implant is going to stay exactly where you placed it while your teeth are going to move with your jaw. Um, so what I would recommend for patients is if, if they're missing their laterals is if you can, if, if you can do something that's minimally invasive, like what we call a resin bonded bridge, it's a porcelain bridge that's cemented to the back of the neighboring teeth. So you don't really have to drill on the teeth. It's very conservative. You can get good results. It's just you have to have a doctor that's really good at that. Can, can I stop right there and kind of explain? Yeah. So basically what he's saying is you have the, the missing tooth in, in the middle, right? You have a tooth on the right and tooth on the left side of it, back in front of it. And what you're doing is using the two that the two teeth that are there and bonding or attaching that the, um, the missing, we'll call it fake tooth, to those two teeth to kind of give it support. Right, right. And it's, it's great because let's say it comes off. Well, you could just re-cement it, right? In most cases, you don't even have to drill on the teeth. And let's say you do eventually in your life still end up wanting to do an implant. To me, it's better to do that implant when you're in your late 30s, 40s, early 50s versus when you do it in your 20s. Because now, you know, 
if it's going to be, you know, 20, 30 years before you really realize a difference between the level of that implant crown and the neighboring teeth, I'd rather that difference be noticeable when I hit 80 and I don't even care no more if I'm still around, right? Versus, and I'm 20, now I'm 45, and I'm like, wait a minute. That looks weird. This, this year right here didn't used to be like that, Doc. Okay. I, I don't <laughs> you know, know where I mean? that accent came from, so I apologize again. <laughs> I, I've just been apologizing for a lot of this. No, people need to know. We <laughs> get talked to all the time. I'll be at parties yeah. and people will be like, oh, yeah, I've been meaning to come to your office because I got this right here. You yeah. see that? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody needs so, to go hey, on YouTube. Bro, I'm, I'm trying looks, to eat my, he, he, I eat my ribs. <laughs> trying to eat my, my chicken wings. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, okay, so here's a question for you, uh, and this is a follow-up to that, right? So we know that you want to try to wait for your jaw to develop before you place implants. I, I want everybody yeah. to understand that. Here's a follow-up. If you if your lateral or your teeth just never developed, right? So you just never had that tooth. There's a good chance that you may need what we call bone grafting. We need to mm -hmm. build the, the 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 ridge is what we call it, but build the bone around where we're going to place an implant. And I use the analogy of if you're going to place a screw on a wall, you want to look for the stud and you want that stud to be wide enough to accept your, uh, your screw without showing the threads. Right. And that's exactly what we want here, right? If your, your, your teeth never developed, then you don't have enough adequate bone for us to place that screw or implant. And the reason right. why is because again, your teeth come down, guess what they bring down? They bring bone down with it or they right. go up and they bring bone with it. But if that never happens, you usually have a collapsed area. And if you never had that, feel it with your finger. You'll feel a depression. So right. when a patient says, well, why do I need bone graft? Why do I need to build that area up? What would you say to them? And how do you get patients to understand? And how long does that add to your implant process? You know, that's a, that's a great question. In a Because we have so much technology at our hands, we can often show them the 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 cross section of of the the CAT scan, which is a three dimensional image, and I can show them where I want to put the implant. And with the software, I can actually grab an implant and place it there, and they can visually see that this implant is not in bone, right? And I can tell them, this is where I need to screw this titanium implant in. You can clearly see there's not enough bone, but great thing is, it's very predictable in my hands to grow that bone. And this is how we're going to do it. And that's how I kind of start off the conversation. I think people are so visual, mm -hmm. you know, unless they've been through it before and they've previously learned and seen it, it's always great to give them that visual education so they can really be invested, you know, wholeheartedly in that decision uh, to, you know, because those can be expensive, right. you know? Yeah, no, you're right, you're right, man. And so let me ask you another question then, mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of wrap it up with one more after this and then we'll get out of here. But, and then we'll, we have more questions. And if you guys want us to do another episode of more questions, we, we can do this all day. We can just answer a lot of questions. And I think we're, we're kind of geeking out. We got to bring some of these, some of these guests on. You know, that it's way so they funny. Can... No one wants to come on. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's you. I, I kind of blame you. I don't think they like you. I didn't want to say anything. Me? <laughs> I don't want to say anything. Well, I make all the funny faces and all the yeah, funny I, noises. I, it's it's concerning to people, I'm sure. I, I, it can't be me. It can't, I'm too adorable. I'm too adorable. It can't, it can't be, be me. Can't. <laughs> no, but it's so funny. I've asked people like, hey, do you want to come on? They're like, no, no, just answer my question. And I'm like, oh, okay. Everyone is shy. Everyone yeah. is shy. Yeah. Even some of my doctor friends, I'm like, hey, you're a pediatric you know, specialist. I would love to get your opinion. You know, me and my buddy... Oh no, I'm too shy. I can't do that. That's, that's it. not respect. That's I'm it. Just like, it's just me talking to you. That's it. That's it. And just in front of your computer. That's all. Right. You know, it's funny. It's like I've always. I, it's funny whenever people do end up coming on, they go, "Oh yeah, it was mm -hmm. really fun." And I'm like, "Exactly. That's what we're telling you. We're not serious people. So don't be afraid. No. We're not going to sit here and grill you. We're literally going to ask you stuff that you know. Like, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? We're not. I mean, there's sometimes where we've done that. And and we we've been we've been triggered, you know. There are other times, but most people we we don't do that with. We don't. Do right. That. We care. We right. like them, you know. Let me ask you this, really. People, you know, use mouthwash, and mm -hmm. some people use it, and then they rinse their mouth. They basically mm -hmm. use the mouthwash, and then they get water and they rinse their mouth out. T t tell us how do we properly use mouthwash? I know it's a silly question 
for right. us because we're like, oh, we use mouthwash. Don't rinse it out. But people have this habit where you use the mouthwash and then you rinse your mouth because maybe there's a little bit of alcohol in there or whatever. But how do we use mouthwash? Well, typically we like you to rinse for X amount of time, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, yeah. spit it out and then don't rinse and then don't eat or drink anything for, you know, some people say 15, 20 minutes. Some people say 30 minutes. Whatever it is in that mouthwash that you want to work has to be around, right? Whether it's fluoride, whether it's, you know, anti-plaque uh, chemicals, mm -hmm. like you want it to hang around a little bit. Um, that's why I always tell patients, you know, use it, especially at night, right before you go to bed, brush your teeth, rinse with this mouthwash, and then just go to bed. That way we know for sure it's on for as long as, you know, well, as long as they're sleeping. So then you, you, <laughs> you brought up something else and this is, people don't realize that we don't plan this stuff out because we're not really uh, organized people when it comes to not this podcast. For everything else, we're very organized. But when it comes to the right. podcast, I feel like we just shoot by the hip. And we go, oh yeah, that's a great question. Let's answer that one. Um, if you had to pick, and this was something that was brought to my attention recently. If you mm -hmm. had to pick a time, remember, I want everybody to listen to this. Brush twice a day. Minimum. But if you had to pick one time in the day, to brush your teeth <laughs> mm. when would you brush your teeth and when would you pick it what time if i could only do one time it would be right before bed explain that um because what happens let's say you brush it in the morning well then you eat then you eat again then you eat again you've had a couple snacks you've had some coffees you had some sodas throughout the whole day that's sitting on your teeth right after you brush so even if you did brush right now, not only that, all that stuff is sitting on your teeth throughout the whole night, right? Whereas if you brush at night, you bathe it with fluoride, you cleaned all the gunk off, that fluoride is going to stay on your teeth for, let's say, eight hours. Then you start eating. But then the shortest period of time, the longest period of time you're going to have uh, with, with food or sugar on your teeth is going to be, you know, let's say that 16 hours. Versus if you do it in the morning, now you got the whole 16 hours plus the other eight, you know, um, but we should we don't even have to have this conversation because you're going to be brushing your teeth twice a day. So here's it. So if you brush your teeth twice a day, what's the best times? If you're brushing twice a day, what's the best time? Like morning, you talking about. So that, that's it. OK, so you're talking about before you eat breakfast, after you eat breakfast. Well, but that's not fair because there are people that don't eat breakfast. <laughs> what do we do with that? Well, that's true. But if if let's say you're going to do morning and night, right? Right. And mo like I don't eat breakfast. Right. Why well, still? You know, you've been sleeping all night. Yeah, you, you want a morning brush. breath. Yeah. So I brush my teeth in the morning. Right. Right. Good. Um, but let's say you do eat breakfast. Yeah. For those that do eat breakfast. Right. Do you want to brush your teeth right when you wake up? Or do you want to brush your teeth after breakfast? Oh, that's a tough one. I'll be honest with you. That's a tough one because I kind of go between the two. Um, mm -hmm. I personally, and I'm going to speak for myself, and I'm going to oust. I'm going to oust myself. Okay. I I well, see. See, we're not what? doing that. We're not what? doing that. We're not doing. I'm not coming out of anything. I'm not coming out. He, he they. I'm, see, she? you can't. Don't do that. No, no. <laughs> you you insinuate stuff. You insinuate stuff. <laughs> And then I get phone calls talking about some. Oh, I heard your episode. Are you, are you, do you want? To I heard. Call? I heard your pronouns. Yeah. I'm trying to be respectful. Well, you've been a friend of mine for a while now. <laughs> I don't want to get you wrong. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I personally brush before I brush and then I eat. Okay. I brush then you I brush eat again afterwards. I, I actually at, at at lunchtime I do after okay. I eat I, I brush again. So I brush like three times a day. But okay. I brush and then I eat. Okay. Right? But in an ideal situation, if you could, I would say you brush. I mean, I would say you eat and then you brush. Right. Right. But then people always say you have to wait a certain amount of time before you brush your teeth again. Right. After you eat, you have to wait a certain amount of time because of the uh, demineralization from the food and everything that you eat. Right. And then you, mm -hmm. you, you uh, uh, brush. So it would be, what is it like 20, 30 minutes? And then it's like 40, brush. it's like 40 minutes, but that's, right. that cycle is how long it takes for the acid made by the bacteria to start forming and then your body's buffering system your saliva kind of 
realkylates alkylates that, right? But you don't have to wait to brush your teeth because if you brush your teeth, let's say I eat and I brush my teeth right away. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not even going to go through that 40 minute cycle because I don't removed all the sugar for the bacteria. Okay. okay. So you kind of prevent all that from See? happening. Okay. So, so you would say brush after you eat. Ideally. Brush after you eat. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. want to about brush after you eat, right? Oh, if, if for nothing else, orange juice right after you brush your teeth is nasty. <laughs> so if you're an orange juice drinker, you <laughs> definitely want to brush your teeth after you drink your morning orange juice. <laughs> there you go. And if, if 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 you cannot, if you cannot brush it according to research, then just brush. <laughs> just brush. <laughs> and and we just want you to brush. Yeah. You know, when you do it, don't have to be. We just yeah. want you to brush. I'm just happy if you brush. That's it. Brush twice a day. Yeah. Brush twice a day in the morning and after. Oh, at, at, at nighttime. But here's something yeah. too. At nighttime, don't forget that our saliva production lowers. Mm -hmm. And if you have a lot of bacteria in your mouth, that bacteria is going to double, triple when they have an environment that's conducive to their growth, which is reduction of uh, saliva. Your saliva reduces, man, that bacteria is having a field day. Hence the whole right. morning breast situation, right? And so the key is if you're going to brush, if I had to pick a time, if I had to brush once a day, I, like mm -hmm. I, I would pick exactly what you said. I'd pick at nighttime so I can at least reduce the amount of bacteria in my mouth before I go to bed, which would then hopefully not cause too much havoc. Right. Which which is even a, a bigger argument for people that are, are like late night snackers. Yes. Right. Because what happens is, you know, Walt just brought up this cycle of, of 40 minutes. Within the first 20 minutes after you eat something, the bacteria start eating that sugar and create an acid byproduct, which can cause cavities, right? Your body, your, your saliva can, can be that pH buffer to, to combat that acid. Mm -hmm. And over that following 20 minutes, kind of reduce the acidity that was created by the bacteria. But if your saliva is dropping at night, and you're eating right before you go to bed or drinking sugary drinks or soda and you don't brush your teeth. Now, not only do you have sugar sitting in your teeth for longer, but you've got decreased salivary flow while you're sleeping. And it's just all bad. You know, it's just all bad. But here's a question, because I know a lot of people use water picks. Mm. Are you a fan of water picks? Have you ever seen someone that says they use a water pick and things look great? So, so here's one thing we can do. We can leave it here. Okay. Come back for the next episode, or I okay. can answer the question. This is up to you because oh, Harvey wants yeah, to do a this. cliffhanger, huh? I want to do it. I want to do a cliffhanger. <laughs> okay, this, okay. Because I get that question so much, and I get that. I mean, oh, I, I have a water pick, and I'm so excited about. It. I'm like, okay, that's what's up, and I'm gonna tell you the benefits of using the water pick and the negative aspects of using a water pick. Gotcha. I like On it. the next show. On the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode. <laughs> and right, that always reminded me of like Dragon Ball Z where I could just sit there and be like, it, what, what, what's going on? What, what, I, what, I thought I was going to figure out what was going on. God, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> on the next episode of Truth Be Told. And no more. Did, he, did the command man hit him? Did, we don't know. Hit him? We no, don't no, know no. if Frieza ever destroyed that planet. <laughs> but anyway, let's not talk about that. For us, for anybody that is thinking we are adults and we like anime. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, but, speaking of anime, bro, real quick. Yeah. Um, my son is like heavy in anime. Oh, beautiful. I went through my phase when you I was did, younger. You did, well. you did well. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Listen, when I was younger, it was things like Eon Flux, mm -hmm. um, Vampire Hunter D. I don't even remember it. that back That's in the it. day. Hunter X. Yep. And, and then at some point, it's like I kind of transitioned away from it. And now it warms my heart to see my son into anime. And he doesn't think I'm cool, but I look at him and I'm just like, I was there too. <laughs> like, I, I was there too. You see, you should never transition out of. I love uh, it. Uh, you should never transition out of uh anime you should just live no. that should be like on your casket like well, <laughs> your favorite anime character should be on <laughs> I've, I've gotten back in because my kids and for all the anime lovers in here like they watch shows like jujitsu kainen yes. and all them yes they stay in rotation at my house so i'm by That's default it. i'm acting like an adult on my laptop as i'm like <laughs> actually watching and getting into it <laughs> so, hey, 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 hey rewind that i mean I, 
No, what and if that? anyone knows, there's so many racist jokes in anime now that, that but they're funny. Oh. They're they're funny. Like whoever is dubbing these anime episodes is like low key like a genius troll. Cause I'll be sitting there watching, like, are did he just say that? But it's funny. Oh like, Jesus. It's See, you're funny. about to get us you're about to get us canceled <laughs> with all four people that listen to us. Right. But uh <laughs> for those people that do listen, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. You know, we honestly we we love doing this, uh, yeah. and and we definitely appreciate you guys listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, please email it to us at real dentist with an S, R E A L, dentist D E N T I S T S, at gmail dot com. There's, there's two of us. There's two of us. Dentist. See, if you say real dentist yeah, you... and just put me, I'd understand that too. But it's real <laughs> dentist with an S because there's two of us. So <laughs> email it to us, and I promise you, we'll answer your questions. Next time, we're going to talk about what we think about water picks. Please let us know. Indeed. Well, listen, happy Valentine's Day, brother. Give the wifey a big hug. Yes, um, I, got, I got three women in my life. I got to entertain them, please. So, yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. Same here. Exactly. Same, same here. And and, so, and, 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 gets, and no matter what, expensive. no matter what, I'm going to say this, no matter what, I'm probably not going to do it right. So it is what it is. You know, <laughs> I just try my best. Right. <laughs> I want everybody to know this is a, this. <laughs> I just try my best. You know, I'm going to mess up somehow and my kids are going to let me know. So, it's all good. <laughs> you know, one, one year, I remember one year I took my youngest thinking that those are such uh, my oldest thinking that this was such a great idea. I was like, you know, well, let's go shopping for mommy for Valentine's Day. And I took mm -hmm. her to, uh, you know, we were walking around. I think it was like an outlet or something in the mall. And she basically went into one of the jewelry places and saw shiny jewelry and i said okay we're well, gonna right. pick one she goes i want this one this is really nice mommy's gonna really like it and i was like oh you know how much is it and the, the lady was so nice she goes oh she's that's so good what a great choice and then she looks at the tag and she goes are, are you sure and i was like ma'am <laughs> okay yeah. this is valentine's day okay <laughs> please give me the number <laughs> and she goes no seriously sir are you sure and then she tried to direct my daughter to something else right. not not being smart i said ma'am ma she picked this one yes cockiness she ma'am she picked this one wrap it up what this one says <laughs> sir this one is also nice too hey i said this one ma'am <laughs> little did i know she was trying to tell me you idiot it's oh my expensive gosh. for no reason so don't do it sure enough i walked out with that damn uh, bracelet and I, I was like so mad at my child <laughs> see that's how i know it was expensive because you you've avoided mentioning how much it was no, I'm which not, is classy I'm not. which is classy but yeah. that also tells you how expensive it was, <laughs> it was. And it's, that's, that's what our egos that's how our egos get us into trouble bro right? <laughs> i was so stupid and that lady was so sweet she was just like sir are you sure you don't want this one little one and she's trying her best to like derail and just defer my child to something else and I kept going, right. no, 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 ma'am. This is, right. is father-daughter dis discussion. Calm down. <laughs> Mind your own business, right. you know? Come to find out, man. I said never again. I'm never oh, taking man. them anywhere. <laughs> no, you better I'll, take go, I'll go do it myself. Go to take your kids to Claire's and be like, pick something out for mommy. <laughs> pick out some jewelry for mommy. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been like, let's go to Walmart. This is a section. <laughs> this is yours, you know? Right. And I'm telling you, man. Hey, listen, I am never too good for Walmart. I love Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We'll talk later, buddy. All right. Sounds All right, good, everybody, buddy. Everybody, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. And enjoy. Please be safe. Indeed. Take care. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to this episode of Tooth Be Told. The opinions on this episode are just that, our opinions. Please consult your dental professional before taking any action with your dental health. If you have any questions about anything you heard on this episode, please contact us at Real Dentist with an S. That's R E A L, Dentist with an S at gmail.com. We would be very happy to return any message that we receive because we love the communication that we have with our listeners.